Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, K Street lobbyist, and host of Behind the Curtain, Saturday mornings at 10 on Newsmax TV. Also, Richard Fowler, Democratic strategist and host of the nationally syndicated Richard Fowler Show. Download his podcast at FowlerShow.com. We open in New York. I have great, great admiration and praise for the city of New York and the state of New York. I can think of nowhere that I would rather have this victory. You proved once again there's no place like home. <laughs> On Tuesday, Democratic frontrunner Hillary Clinton captured 58 percent of the vote, and Republican frontrunner Donald Trump took more than 60 percent. Both candidates added to their delegate lead and shook off a string of losses. Richard, any surprises here? No, not at all. I think what we, we expect, we, we, we are who they thought we thought they were, right? Uh, or they are who we thought they were Good in line. both of these races. Uh, what we saw from Donald Trump was once again a clean line, Ted's clock, uh, and John Kasich was a non-factor. As far as Hillary Clinton, I think the, uh, the only surprising thing here is that Bernie didn't do as well as folks thought he would do in this primary. But with that being said, Hillary Clinton has a New York machine. Remember, she's been senator there for almost two terms, uh, and so she had the ability to squeak it out. And so I give her campaign a lot of praise and a lot of aspiration, admiration for winning their home state. Jack, any surprises? No, I agree, largely agree with Richard on this. I'll tell you, Hillary, no place like home. Home to her has been a lot of things. She's lost that southern accent that she used to have when he was in the White House from remember, Arkansas. Yeah. Now she puts on a New York accent. The transitions are unreal. The only surprise here, Morris, is that Trump did draw from an unusually broad group of Republicans. I mean, he draws from a broad group, a little bit from each. This got even broader. He, go, he even drew a little more uh, from the working class, he's hitting about all six segments of the Republican topography, uh, and that, that bodes well. Whether he gets to 1237, I think it's 50-50. All right, the candidates move on to another Super Tuesday that includes Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island, but Ted Cruz is campaigning in Indiana. Thank you for your leadership. I'm so privileged to be with so many tremendous patriots. I'm privileged to be here with your incredible governor, Mike Pence. Now, Jack, Indiana doesn't vote until May 3rd. Why is Cruz spending so much time there? Uh, because he's doing poorly in Pennsylvania. Now, he can, he'll get delegates in Pennsylvania because of complicated state rules there where he can work behind the scenes, but he's going to be crushed in Pennsylvania. So the reality is it won't be a good media show for him on Tuesday night. He already knows this, so he doesn't want to be seen in Pennsylvania. It's dicey for Cruz right now. There's not, a, And I don't say this as a Trump supporter. I just say it as an analyst. It's dicey for Cruz. Uh, he's got to work behind the scenes. Trump is going to get clearly over 1,150 delegates. That much is clear. He's ahead in California. He's ahead in Pennsylvania. Uh, he's ahead in Rhode Island. He's ahead in Connecticut. The only issue is whether Cruz can grab just enough to keep him short of that 1,200. All right. Meanwhile, Trump's primary election strategist, Paul Manafort, says the GOP will see, quote, a real different guy if Trump claims the nomination. What does that mean to you, Richard? Well, I think it means that you're going to see, uh, you know, more presidential Donald Trump. We saw that in his Tuesday speech, in his tu his, the, the speech this past Tuesday, where he taught, he referred to Senator Ted as Senator Ted Cruz instead of right. Lion Ted. Right? He's changed slowly but surely, changing up his rhetoric. And to go back to a point that you made about Indiana, here's the thing. I think if you look at the delegate math, math very carefully here, what you'll find out is that for Ted Cruz to block a Donald Trump nomination, blocking him to get the one, two, three, seven, which is what he needs to be the nominee, Indiana is that stopgap measure. So what Ted, the Ted Cruz camp is banking on is a huge win in Indiana. They're going to put all their eggs there thinking if they can do well there, they will have just enough to block him from getting it and take it to a convention where they believe that they can win in a second or third round ballot. Now, the, the problem, of course, Richard is exactly right. Now, the problem with that is that the momentum coming out of Tuesday could be quite destructive. So I'm not sure if that's a wise strategy. If I agree. I, if I were Cruz, I think I'd stand and fight in Pennsylvania and some of these other states. I don't think this is a wise strategy. The media may well crucify him for being out of Pennsylvania on the big night. Now, what I would say, Morris, if you look at Trump, the real issue with Trump is when he can pivot. 
Well, when let, he can, let's get yeah. this is trying to get to, to inside yep. baseball. My biggest issue is the fact that if he's going to be more presidential, what's he already been? Do you think the public is going to buy these multiple personalities? That shows a lack well, of genuous. You know, well, being, I, just think, genuous. I think it all it really all depends more. It depends on how he's defined, right? What what the Republicans have not done very well, neither John Kasich or Ted Cruz, they've not done a good enough job of truly defining Donald Trump. And that has one to do with the fact that he already has a media brand that has sort of subsumed the entire you know Republican landscape and two they just don't have the resource well they have the money to do it but they haven't figured out the oh, way I, I don't agree really Richard no, I, I don't agree with that at all I think Trump has defined the terrain both for himself and the opponent no you're, I agree there right. problem you're, is he keeps to, he, he himself is defining different aspects of himself for well, example, exactly he's, he's, he's right. gets away with that Trump, Trump yeah. waded into one of politics most contentious issues North Carolina's so-called bathroom law Ted Cruz responded North Carolina did something that was very strong, and they're paying a big price, and there's a lot of problems. One of the best answers I heard was from a commentator yesterday saying, leave it the way it is, right now. So, so if Caitlyn Jenner were to walk into Trump Tower and want to use the bathroom, you would be fine with her using any bathroom she chooses? That is correct. A position that drew immediate criticism from Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Donald on television this morning said, gosh, he thought that men should be able to go into the girls' bathroom if they want to. Now, let me ask you, have we gone stark raving nuts? I am waiting with anticipation for the new baseball caps, make PC great again. All right, now, what do you make of this, Jack? It's a wedge issue. Of Trump, is Trump moving to the middle too soon? Well, I agree, I agree with, with uh, Cruz and not Trump. However, I think Trump is picking a good time to pivot. He, he, this is time for him to move to the middle. He's ahead in Pennsylvania. He's ahead in California. He's even ahead in Indiana, based on the polls right now. We'll see the next three weeks. I think this is a good time to pivot. I think a guy like Paul Manafort and his new team is telling him, we have to take a little bit of a chance. It's time to start pivoting. We're largely done with the evil. Evangelicals, even if we have a floor fight that won't that won't showcase evangelicals, it will showcase other kinds of Republicans. I think he's pivoting at just the right time. I think Richard, that's right. for you now on the left, an interesting exchange between Vice President Biden and the New York Times. Biden says he prefers Bernie Sanders' aspirational approach to Clinton's caution. Was this an endorsement of sorts, Richard? Well, I don't think the vice president's go, the vice president's going to endorse, but I think it speaks to where the party is. There's no question that both on the Republican side and the Democratic side, we're going to have to do a lot of soul searching between now and our respective conventions, right? And part of that is Hillary Clinton's going to have to find a way to appease those individuals who stand on the left and say, "We don't want a candidate that's going to be a pragmatic progressive. We want somebody that's going to come to Washington, take the bull by the horns, and tame it." Um, oh, and that's Richard, what Bernie Sanders has espoused. That's a little espoused. too diplomatic. And that's, that's what you're, Bernie you're Sanders Spouse, and I don't think uh, what Hillary Clinton's going to have if to I do ever, let me is she's something. going to have to find a way to move herself to the left and get these votes. If to I ever become her. president, you're going to be at the top of my ambassador list. That's just rather too diplomatic. Let me tell you this. This administration hates the Clintons. They hate Hillary Clinton. That's Barack, not true at all. Barack, Barack Obama, Obama and Joe Biden to be the have Secretary terrible of State. hatred. The answer is it was. That's wrong. That's he had absolutely to bring, wrong. He had to bring the party together. If it, no, that's not. It wait, no, uh, I'm, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Not, that's only true. Did, not only did he appoint Hillary Clinton as Secretary of State, but her campaign chair, John Podesta, worked in the Obama White House, as well as her communications Richard, director, you know Jen Paul Mari, well, you know worked in the Obama well White Obama House. I can go on 09. and on and on. You know this better than I do. Had Obama not appointed Hillary Clinton. All right, well, or, as the saying goes, keep your enemies close. All right, looking at the numbers, it's impossible for Sanders to win. Clinton could very easily lose, the, uh, lose every remaining state, that's right, and still reel in enough delegates to secure the nomination. So why is Sanders still in this, Jack? Oh, I give it to you in one word, television. They need a fight. They need a street fight. Bernie Sanders is great TV. Young people oh, watch him. He's strong in that demographic. Everybody wants the young demo and then the 25 to 54 demo. Bernie is great TV. They'll keep him alive as long uh, as they I can. Richard, why is he still there? I would say this, it's more than just great TV. If you look at every single exit poll, and the one thing, that the one story the media is missing, right, in Hillary Clinton's huge victory in New York City, is that Bernie Sanders still captured voters 35 and under by all, almost 20 points, right? So Bernie Sanders has captured the imaginations of new voters, the people that will take this country over in just a couple of you, months. You endorse him? Right? You endorse him? It's not about him endorsing him. You endorse him? It's what his campaign shows. Are you making right? an endorsement? Hillary Clinton has been able to 
to turn out the, no re the Democratic base, whereas in Bernie Sanders has really found a way to energize no millennials. Millennials well, will be the future of this country very soon. Richard and and that's what point. Donald Trump has also been able to do. All right, there was some agreement on the campaign trail this week on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's been President Obama's main economic plank, but Clinton, Sanders, and Trump all oppose it. Took seven years for Obama to pull this together. Is it dead in the water, Jack? Oh, it's hard to say. I, I think it is. I just don't think they can get the votes. I don't think McConnell can get the votes. I think they've got a, he's got a real problem. I think it's just too controversial. I don't think yet. The reality, Morris, is I don't think you have enough legislative days. I'll tell you something interesting related to this. We're seeing left, far left, and far right come together in Besides this country in a way we've never That's seen before. They agree on trade. They agree on political correctness in terms of fighting corporate America. There's broad agreement now. Some interesting things I, could happen in U.S. politics I in the next two years. Uh, I tend to agree with Jack. I think that TPP is, uh, the opposing TPP is one place where the left and the right have come together. We've also seen them come together on criminal justice reform. Sadly, the mantles of this Congress is being held together by the establishment, people who Ted Cruz have been endorsed That's by. Right. And, and, they're, and they're really, really the ones causing the problem here. But absent from the trade debate, very interestingly, Morris, is Ted Cruz, because Ted Cruz is trying to calculate his way to this nomination instead of winning his way there. And so he's going to do every issue where he could steal a delegate or two and trade is one of them all right before we go President Obama and the First Lady joined fans in mourning Prince who died suddenly on Thursday at the age of 57 Mr. Obama called Prince a creative icon. Last June, he performed for the first couple in a private two-hour show for about 500 people in the East Room of the White House. Obama, who's on a swing through the Middle East and Europe, reflected on the artist. It's a remarkable loss, and I'm staying at Winfield House, the U.S. Ambassador's residence. Uh, it so happens our ambassador has a turntable, and so uh, this morning we played uh, Purple Rain and Delirious just to get warmed up. Uh, before we uh, left the house for important bilateral meetings like this. Prince sang for the Obamas, but Newsmax reports some people thought of him as a Republican because he donated to a GOP senator from Minnesota in 1990. Truth is, he was tough to pin down on politics. The mark of a true artist, Richard? Indeed, the mark of a true artist. I had the privilege to attend uh, Paisley Park reception with Prince um, last year, and so it's quite, it's, it's crazy to think that just a year ago um, I was with the artist and now um, to know that he's not here, it's a very sad thing. I'll just tell you, Morris, anybody who can earn nearly a billion dollars in the music business, I have nothing but the highest of regard for. We'll let's, miss him. Let's end on a blend of red and blue. Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, Richard Fowler, Democratic strategist, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank, Thank you, Morris. Morris. Thanks, Richard.